Welcome to Cosmos Quest! Cosmos Quest is going to be a series about my attempts to use Cosmos. Now, what is Cosmos? Cosmos is a piece of software that works with Visual Studio C Sharp. The name Cosmos was chosen before a meaning was given to it, but it turned into an acronym that stands for C Sharp Open Source Managed Operating System. Cosmos refers to itself as an operating system construction kit. Basically, you write code in C Sharp, and Cosmos will turn it into a bootable operating system, probably using a method that involves dark magic or something. Now you may be thinking understandably that this wouldn't work. So now I'm going to show you that it works. Cosmos requires Visual Studio 2017, so I'll need to install that first, as well as some development tools for .NET. After all that is set up, it's time to download Cosmos. The latest user kit of Cosmos was released on September 28th, 2017. For right now, to keep things simple, I will be using the user kit. A dev kit also exists for people interested in modifying the source code for Cosmos itself. I would also like to mention that Visual Studio 2017 does not work on Windows Server 2012 for some reason. My desktop PC runs Server 2012, so I will need to do everything on my Surface Pro 2 that has a broken USB port. Luckily, the keyboard dock on the Surface Pro 2 is fine, but the trackpad... Let's just say the trackpad's made of felt. Before actually doing anything, I needed to create a Cosmos project. I created a C Sharp project, but there are options to create Cosmos projects in Visual Basic and F Sharp as well. I can only imagine the pain and anguish that would go into attempting to write an operating system in Visual Basic. Before actually starting to develop my own operating system, if that's what you would even call it, I needed to make sure that Cosmos was installed properly, so I ran the default program. The default program simply takes an input to a console and regurgitates it back to you. The default OS is severely limited, but it does what we want it to do, which is to show that somehow this C-sharp code gets turned into a bootable OS. And yes, somehow that is possible. Now the OS's kernel can be edited like any old C-sharp console application that you would create normally for Windows. The first thing I thought of doing for this Cosmos OS was replacing the text regurgitating thing with an actual console that takes in commands. I added an about command which gives some information about the OS, and a CLS command that clears the screen. I also made it so that if you type a command that's not recognized, it says bad command. Now even though this is better than just regurgitating what the user types, it still can't do any of the OS first timer tasks. I will be making the calculator first, because it seems that every single video that I make involves creating a calculator in some way. The calculator that I am writing in this clip takes in all of your input on one line, and it is written like any old console calculator. The operator goes between the two values that you are calculating. The calculator has the ability to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and modulo, but you cannot perform any complex calculations that require more than one operator at a time. The calculator requires that each part of the math expression be split with a space. This is so that C Sharp's split command can be used to tell the three parts of the math problem apart. When I tried to run this, I got an error invoking IL2CPU, which is the thing that converts C Sharp code into machine code. Yeah, that kinda needs to work smoothly to do really any of this Cosmos stuff. I'm pretty sure the error comes up when it tries to convert a string to an integer, however, I could not find a way to get the error to stop. Yes, the first thing I tried was removing the part of the code that caused the error, but the error didn't go away after that. After that, I tried restarting Visual Studio, and then the entire PC. Neither of those worked. The only fix I could find that works is creating a brand new project and copying the code over. So I guess if you get an error invoking IL2 CPU in this way, your project is pretty much dead for right now. After everything was running smoothly again, I decided that, instead of using c -sharp's normal string-to-int conversion, I would write my own function. I wrote it in a normal console application first to save time, and then ported it over to Cosmos and made some changes that lets it work in the operating system. And then I wrote the entire calculator again using my new function, since I deleted the old calculator and didn't save it anywhere. So, now let's see if this works. Okay, so there's some minor bugs, like the calculation being off by a lot, so I guess I'll need to fix this. Eventually, I got it to work to the point where it would successfully calculate everything the right way, except for the ones place. The fix that I came up with is terrible, but I'm doing it anyway. What I did was add a zero to the end of each term, since it never seems to mess up zeros. After the calculation happens, the result gets 10 divided from it, except if it's multiplication or division. Products get 100 divided from them, and quotients don't get anything divided from them. Now, finally, this calculator is in a working state. I was not expecting it to take this long.
Now, if my operating system was shown on OS First Timer, Diana would be able to do one of the tasks. Be sure to buy Calculator OS when it comes to stores on February 29th, 2019. Only $204,000. Now this may not seem all that interesting, but remember, this is a somewhat functional operating system that was written in C-sharp. I still can't believe that this is something that can even be done. Before I end this video, I have a couple things to say and I didn't want to make an update video. If you don't care about any of this stuff, you can leave now if you want. First of all, this video has a new style, which I have decided to call Neon. What do you think? Second, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you may have noticed that there weren't any cartoon characters in this video. That is because Cosmos Quest won't have any. And lastly, should I move Paper Mario modding to a second channel, or should I leave it here? The reason I ask is because some of you may not be particularly interested in Paper Mario and may not want to see that stuff in your subscription feed. Likewise, some people might want to see only Paper Mario stuff from my channel. If I do move Paper Mario stuff to a second channel, I will post an update video with the link. And yes, Junior Troopa and Mimi will be moving permanently to Paper Mario related content where they belong. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.